Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, dogs, and cats, and welcome back to another Mountain Blade Bannerlord Fanlord video. This video will cover real lore from Warband, but it will also cover some of my personal predictions as well. Note that these predictions might not actually be true, and thanks for watching. As we know, Nords are not actually native to Calradia, and are actually from a northern continent. The similarity to this could be the Nordic controlled territories in northern Europe, but they were actually from Scandinavia. So how did Nords get a foothold in Calradia? and go as far as to have a large, significant kingdom in the heart of it? Well, here are my predictions. During the golden years of the Empire, the Emperor allowed thousands of Nordic immigrants into Calradia. Before this, most of them were shunned out and seen as outsiders, and natives did not want them living there. But the Empire had good use for them, and that was to pull the war galleys during the expansion period in exchange for land. The North was sparsely populated, and land that the Empire needed to control. Bringing in new loyal taxpayers to tend the lands of the North would be vital to be keeping a foothold on the massive, never before seen size of an empire. Also, the northern continent which the Nords were from was a very harsh living environment, and many settlements had not even moved past the hunter-gatherer style of survival. New fertile lands meant to them a lot, and it was a win-win for both parties, but would also lead to the later problems with the empire. Calradia and the new Nords established new cities in the north, like Balgard and Verchig, which were both hotspots for Nordic immigration and eventually the great city of Sargat would rise from just a small town into one of the largest cities of the empire due to immigration. Although good for the empire's expansion period, it would later come as one of the reasons for its downfall. If there is anything the Nords are known for, it's their pride in their culture and their brutalness to their enemies. The empire outstretched itself too thin over its last years, unable to pay its troops and keep up morale. So eventually, the Kingdom of Sturgia was the first to declare independence from the Empire, and only one of two to successfully succeed, unless you count Batania, but that gets complicated. The revolution started in Verchag and quickly spread across the north, as more and more Nords, now in the hundreds of thousands living in the Calradic Empire, wanted and declared independence. Their war was won quick, within a few months, due to the Emperor's war effort in the south against the Asarai. It ended in the battle for the city of Varnavopal, where Imperial troops surrendered their lake city on the coast of the northern lake where we earlier named Phil. This instability was one of the direct causes that led to the Empire's falling. The Landians soon caught on to this, inspired by the Nordic Rebellion, and soon later launched their own rebellion, which was also successful. Valandia and the Kingdom of Sturgia would fight in many more wars, but the Nords and Empire would stay mostly friends after it collapsed into three different zones, east, west, south. Valandia and Sturgia would eventually launch into their first set of conflicts, which were known as the Batanian Wars. I covered this time period in my Batania video, which I recommend you should watch. After the war, Batania is declared a nation, but the Nords have some serious problems with it. For one, it is supposed to be a Nordic territory given to them by East Calradia. And second, because it keeps attacking and burning villages, they were really hard to fight due to them not having a central government. The second major war the Nords would have with Valandia would be the Second Nordic Valando Wars, which also contributed to the fall of the nation and its civil war between Swadians and Rodok. While Valandia was crumbling as its armies were defeated by Rodok rebels, Nords pushed west and captured territory all the way to Ostikin, a city that would later be burned down in a war with Swadia. After Valandia was no more, the Nords eventually allied with Swadia for helping them overthrow their oppressive government. The two nations worked together to finally end the nation of Batania, Nords enveloping the northern part of their former territory, while Swadia capturing the rest. The Nords and Swadians would later fight another war together to defeat East Calradia, and then another to stop the rapid spread of territorial control of the early ancestor of the Viegers, the Kingdom of the Kuzites which served as an ancestor not only to the Viegers but also the Kyrgyz Horde. Later, the government would go through a more nationalistic, pro-Nordic state where it wanted to end all relations with other nations, and just expand. This led to a negative relation with the superpower that is known as Swadia. In the first Swadia-Nordic War, Swadia raised Ostikin and later besieged Sargoth, saying that traditionally it belonged to Valandia, so it should belong to them. Although, 
they were defeated at the siege and later made peace. The lead commander of that siege was Prince Harless, later to be King of Swadia and Warband. Thank you all for watching guys, thank you very much for all the support I've been getting on this series. There's a lot of new people here on my channel, I just like to say thank you all for joining in and subscribing. Um, there's going to be a lot new, more of these videos coming out. Tell me how you like this one, leave a like and comment, and subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you all next time. Peace.